In this video, we'll learn about even more counting. We'll learn about permutations, combinations, multinomial coefficients, and the stars and bars method. So how many three color mini rainbows can be made out of seven available colors? Here are some examples. We'll choose an outer color, then a middle and an inner color. So the number of ways we can do so is seven times six times five. And so the number of possible mini rainbows is 210 because order matters. So now let's try to write this differently. So 7 times 6 times 5, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing. This is 1, so I can do this. And notice the top just becomes 7 factorial, and the bottom is just 4 factorial. So, or 7 factorial over 7 minus 3 factorial. This is where picking 3 out of 7 available colors. That means order matters, and so the answer will be like this. So if we want to arrange only k out of n distinct objects, the number of ways to do so is called n pick k, written like this, and it's n times all the way down to n minus k plus 1 and it's uh, written as this uh, for simplification. So now a kindergartner smears three different colors out of seven to make a new color. How many smeared colors can she create? So notice there's, um, there's three factorial ways to order red, blue, and orange, as you see here. But this is, these all lead to the same smeared color. Okay? So what we need to do is take our 210 okay, and divide by six, because each color was counted six times, or three factorial times. So the answer is seven pick three over three factorial. So uh, now, so if we want to select k out of n objects where order does not matter, okay, uh, this is called n choose k, and these are both acceptable limitations. So what we do is we pick k of them where order matters, and then we divide by k factorial because we don't care of, um, we, we have overcounting. So if you plugged in the formula, you would actually see that n choose k and n choose n minus k are the same. Why is this true? Well, let's say we have n equals 4 and k equals 1, and I'm going to show that 4 choose 1 and 4 choose 3 are the same. So here are the ways to choose one color out of four, and there's four ways to do so. Now here are the ways to choose three uh, colors out of four. Well, you can choose yellow, green, and red, blue, green, and red, blue, yellow, and red, and blue, yellow, and green. And so this is four choose three, three, which is four. And so the way to think about it is that if I want to choose three colors, it's the same as choosing which one color I don't want and taking everything else. And so you'll notice that these are complementary rows. Now we'll talk about how many ways we can rearrange letters. So how many ways can we rearrange the letters in math? Well, there's four factorial ways because uh, there's, uh, they're distinct objects. But if I wanted to arrange the letters in poo-poo, um, let's see. So we can choose where the two P's go, and then the O's have to be in the remaining four spots. So, or we can actually choose where the four O's go, and then the, the remaining P's are set. So either way, we get 6 choose 2 times 4 choose 4, or 6 choose 4 times 2 choose 2, which is actually just 6 factorial over 2 factorial and 4 factorial. Um, so another interpretation of this formula here is that arrange the six letters as if they were distinct, so six factorial. Then we have to divide by four factorial and two factorial to account for the, their duplicate O's and their duplicate P's. So a multinomial coefficient is saying that if we have k types of objects and where there's n total, n1 of the first type, n2 of the second type, and so on, and nk of the kth type, then the number of arrangements possible is n factorial over n1 factorial, n2 factorial, all the way to nk factorial. And it's, this is a shorthand for this formula here. So let's see how many ways we can arrange the letters in go doggy. So there's n equals 7 letters, and there's only four distinct letters, g, o, d, and y. So there's three g's, so n1 is 3. There's two o's, so n2 is 2. And then there's only one d and one y, so n3 and n4 are 1. So the answer is 7 factorial divided by 3 factorial because there's three g's, 2 factorial for the two o's, and 1 and 1 for the d and the y. Now we'll talk about how many ways we can give five indistinguishable candies to these three kids here. So here's one candy distribution, here's another, and here's yet another. And these two are different because um, the, the person getting four candies is a different person. So let's count something equivalent, actually. Let's say there's five stars for the candies, the five candies, and two bars uh, for the dividers. So what we get is this arrangement of five stars and two bars, which corresponds to this distribution. And uh, for this one, we would have this arrangement here, where there's one candy, zero, and four. And so the number of, uh, for each candy distribution, there's exactly one corresponding way to arrange the stars and bars. And for each arrangement of stars and bars, there's exactly one candy distribution it represents. So um, the number of ways to distribute five candies to the three kids is the same number of arrangements of five stars and two bars. And this is actually exactly seven choose two, or seven choose five. It's like uh, rearranging the letters in poo poo. So the number of ways to distribute n indistinguishable balls into k distinguishable bins is you have the number of balls plus k minus 1 bins because those are the dividers and you choose either the number of balls or the number of bins. 